Hey guys, what's up? My name is Ambrose and today I'm going to be explaining to you what plugin I used in Cordova to be able to make my dice throwing game free. There's five plugins I had to install in Cordova to be able to make everything work the way I wanted and I'll put a link to them in the description below so check them out. The first one I used at the beginning of the project, I talked about it, I wanted to be able to put shortcuts in the app for Android and there's a plugin for that in Cordova called Cordova Plugin Shortcut. The second one is the Cordova plugin splash screen. Uh, I needed that because on iOS you have to use a splash screen and the only way to add the splash screen to Cordova is to use this plugin. It's fairly straightforward, it's just basically you have your splash screen PNGs and then you set up your configuration in your config.xml. The third one was Cordova plugin uh, screen orientation uh, that allowed me to do some funky stuff, uh, change a little bit the layout when you're in landscape mode. But uh, most of it was because after I installed a plugin to do uh, Google ads, there was some issues when I was flipping the uh, advertisement, the ad wasn't refreshing. I, I had like a landscape ads in portrait mode, which wasn't showing properly and I wanted it to be clean. And since the ad is going to be kind of my source of revenue for the free app, I needed it to be working all the time. So I installed this and uh, when I detect an orientation change, I just refresh the ad and it works pretty well. It seems to have some issues on iOS, but uh, I'm fine with that. I can't do much debugging anyway on iOS. I talk about it in my previous episode that you can check out. The last two plugins, they're kind of the most important one. They're the AdMob and the Ad Pitches. And these two plugins are kind of a little bit more tricky. Uh, before that, the ones I've been mentioning, they're all plugins that you can easily find on the Cordova website. They're like the official supported version of the plugin if you want to do this functionality on your Cordova app. For the last two, there's no official support as far as I could find. I guess as soon as money is involved, uh, there's a lot more people willing to uh, create plugins, but then they'll put some kind of restrictions, they'll put all kind of weird systems in them and uh, sometimes they, they'll, they'll, there are some projects that were started but never quite finished. Um, I actually had to go through a bunch of plugins before I found one that at least I was happy with. The two I found that worked for me, uh, the first one was Cordova plugin AdMob 3 and the second one was CC Fovia Cordova purchase for the in-app purchase. So the main things I'm looking for when I'm uh, checking repositories and I've faced with a choice of plugins was to check the documentation, how good the documentation is and how trustworthy it looks to me. And then the second thing I was looking at is the list of commits. If there was no recent commit, I tried to stay away from it because uh, of course it could be that it's just perfect and it never changed, but especially in stuff like AdMob and in-app purchase, there's always new requirements and new web methods of doing things that come up and there's always updates to the API that needs to be implemented and if if there hasn't been a commit for like a year or two then I'm very suspicious of that plugin working with my system. The two plugins I chose they have fairly recent commits and uh, they look like they had good documentation and they were well supported so uh, that really helped me to implement, especially in-app purchase is kind of a black box and uh, it can be difficult to de debug. And if there's a active community around the plugin, it's quite possible that someone in this community had the same issue as you had, and then you can find the answer to your questions much more easily. So let me talk a little bit more about the last two plugins I had to set up. The first one was the AdMob plugin. Uh, you first need to uh, set up uh, Google AdMob. So you log into the AdMob interface on the Google website and then uh, you start creating your banner ads or your interstitial ad or your uh, video ads. Uh, in my case, I didn't want anything too obtrusive, so I just went for the banner ad. So I created an app, Android, and since I hadn't released my app, I chose uh, not released yet. And then it gives you an app ID and an advertiser ID and uh, you have to set up the plugin with this app ID and then you have to use the uh, uh, banner ID inside the uh, JavaScript when you're setting everything up. The only other thing you need to do is uh, type prepare and then it's gonna show the ad at the bottom by default. If you want to configure a little bit more how your banner is displayed, when it, your banner is displayed, and if you have like interstitial ads and stuff like that, it's a little bit more complicated. But for the bottom banner ad, it's very, very simple. 
Um, after that, all I added was some events, uh, on screen orientation change, for example, so that I could refresh the banner and load the landscape or the portrait banner and so on. And the AdMob banner was showing up fine. So for the in-app purchase, it's not much more complicated, but of course there's a few more steps involved because there's communication with the server and you have to handle potential uh, fail and potential response. The first thing you have to do is kind of like the AdMob, you have to go into your Google Play console and you have to start by creating a new uh, in-app purchase. Uh, this requires you to give it an ID, which can be pretty much anything you want, and then a small title and a description. So when you're creating the in-app purchase ID for a specific purchase, Google will also generate your billing key and you have to go into the properties of the uh, Google Play Console and you have to look up your key and you have to use it inside the plugin so you can make the connection with uh, the plugin and the uh, whole system for your app. And then uh, all you have to do is register your uh, in-app purchase ID and then you have to hook up a couple of events from the plugin and then basically when you want to uh, trigger the purchase, you do a store.order and you pass it the ID of the thing you want to order and then it'll just go through the uh, API of Google. Uh, the user will get to enter his credit card numbers and log into uh, Google and stuff like that. And then you'll get a response back uh, and then you have to hit finish. It depends on the kind of uh, in-app purchase you have. I. I'm, I don't deal with subscription or uh, consumable or stuff like that because you can have also consumable or you could have downloadable content and then you'd have to complete the purchase only once you, the, the, the user has finished downloading the content. Um, but in, in my case, it, it was very simple. As soon as I get the uh, order complete, I, I finish the transaction and then I personally call the code to remove the ads and uh, I save this setting in the save data for the app so that uh, the next time you start the app, you won't even see the ad for a fraction of a second while I'm fetching the latest data from the uh, app store. The only thing that took really a long time with the in-app purchase is the testing process because you have to go through Google servers to make sure that everything is working and Google has a good framework for testing your stuff but um, there's a lot of communication and uh, there's a lot of servers and there's quite a bit of delay between like the moment you cancel an order, for example, and the moment you receive it on the phone. And all this can create a little bit of uh, difficulties. And that's pretty much it. Uh, with these five plugins, I was able to release a free app with advertisement and an in-app purchase to be able to remove the ads. And um, sure, I could have made it a little bit more complicated. There's more stuff involved if you want validation, verification, if you want interstitial ads or video ads and stuff like that. But for this application, I think it, it allowed me to test the whole process. And um, these more uh, complicated thing, I'll be able to do them uh, in the next project I'm gonna start. If you want to see in more detail the code and everything I've done to make this app, uh, don't hesitate to hit my GitHub link. Don't hesitate to send me some message questions and please download the app, try it out, test it and uh, tell me what you think about it. See you guys in my next episode.